Did you enjoy the show? It was great. Me too. I'm a huge fan. Without further ado, let's bring out the cast. Michaela Watkins. Thank you. Tara Lynn Barr. And Tommy Dewey. Thank you guys you are troopers. <laughs> so that's just how much they love the show and they love you guys. So it speaks to all of that. Um, so before we get into the show itself, I would love to know when was your first SAG job? I'll start with Tommy. Oh, um, mine was a Lowe's Home Improvement commercial <laughs> in uh, 2001. Oh. And I went home to Birmingham, Alabama afterwards and uh, a friend of mine from high school said, that's so cool you're working at Lowe's Home Improvement. <laughs> um, mine was, I don't know, for the maybe younger crowd, I was in a, a Nickelodeon show called Drake and Josh. Woo! Mm -hmm. yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah! Um, That's actually Drake right there. Hi, so. Drake! <laughs> it's been so long. Um, but I, I was Taff Hart lead um, into it, so I was, it was like like a whirlwind experience and I was I can't remember how old I was maybe it was 2005 or 2004 I was like 11 or 12 wow. I think that's depressing for everyone I did not appreciate family. it I'll tell you I did not appreciate it when it happened oh, and gross. I do now <laughs> sorry it's okay you're very cute yeah. Michaela um, well it's commercials um, a lot of commercials and that was in Portland Oregon and then I came here with my SAG card and then my first theatrical SAG gig was Charmed. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> or Tits with Witches, if you <laughs> like to call it that. Um, and uh, I, I remember, I, uh, yeah, it was very, I played a detective. It was very fun. Did you have scenes with Shannon Doherty? No, but I rode in a van with her. Okay. And I was like, ooh. Ooh, Brenda. <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> all and wonderful and colorful beginnings. We all appreciate And I died those. in it. I died in it. Uh, <laughs> and man. the answer I died in the Lowe's Home Improvement commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas tree falls on my head. <laughs> it's a lot of dangerous stuff in Lowe's. You have to be very careful. Um, this could be the same answer that I to what I just asked you, but what would you consider your biggest break in the business? And perhaps this came after your humbling first SAG job. Michaela, I'll start with you. Uh, Lowe's Home Improvement. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think the biggest break, like the hands down best phone call I ever got was from Lauren Michaels. That's a good phone call. Yeah. And you were on for two seasons? One season. One season. One um, glorious. Yes. You and Casey Wilson both had interesting experiences on SNL, right? Good. I mean, I, I have yeah. good experiences, and then it was over. <laughs> <laughs> but you did end up working a ton after the show. Yes, sort thank of God. It launched you into... During, right? Sorry, I don't mean to... Yes. No, no, no. Ab yes, but and after, during. but I started to notice you a lot more after. Like, New Christine, you were on, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of that, so it seemed like it was... Yeah, I was actually shooting New Christine when I got the call from Lauren. Literally, wow. was shooting that. That's great. So it's it's a good call, no matter how, it, yeah, in whatever form it comes. Yeah, never forget it. How about you? Oh, okay. Um, uh, in terms of just like, exp I guess exposure was, um, I did an independent film uh, a couple years ago called God Bless America, and it was uh, directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. Mm -hmm. He wrote and directed it. Yes. It's a good He's movie. like Very a cool good guy. Yeah. He wrote it. It's like really divisive, and some people love it, and some people hate it, but it was definitely like a nice little introduction. What was it called again? God Bless America. It's very dark. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone. I'm just putting it out He's there. He's a great director, like it turns He's out. He's lovely, yeah. and he's very, very talented. He's got a lot of opinions. That's good. That are not necessarily shared by everyone in the business. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess that was my, my big one. I mean, have I had one yet? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, I think it was probably my first series regular gig. It was a show called The Mountain that was on the WB. Hmm. Um, I'll hold for applause. <laughs> uh, um, uh, shot in Vancouver, felt like camp. Uh, you know, a bunch of young people that that um, sort of their were the, going through their their first um, on their first show, really, and um, um, kind of put you in that category that you were going to be considered for for regular gigs. That that felt big. I did uh, another a uh, uh, shift into doing. Um, 
comedy a few years later. I think the Mindy Project was a big deal for me in terms of uh, getting to play quirky or weird. There we go. Uh, getting to play weirder characters that speak more nice. to my weirdness, the kind of stuff I want to do. And uh, Alex is certainly mm. weird also. Very good. And what appealed to you specifically about the script for this show when it came to you? When did you realize, like, wow, I, this is something I really want to do? Anyone can answer. For me, it was that it was really funny without being jokey. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, uh, sort of on the, the comedy side of things. And then that it had such teeth and, you know, mm -hmm. that it was so emotional. Some scenes just, you know, play for the play for the um, the drama of it and don't go for doesn't pander. You know, it just seemed really fresh because you read a lot of scripts in a, in a pilot season. Um, and, and they all start to seem like one big blob a lot of times. And this one really stood out. Well, a lot of single camera half hour shows tend to be 90% drama now, and they're now sort of like we've lost the laughs. And this is actually legitimately funny along the way, which I think is really rare. That, that tonally, I think it's actually really tough to strike. And Jason obviously has done that in all of his films, and Xander is very adept at it as well. Um, how about the two of you? What when you read well, your character I specifically? I mean, it was Jason. You know, that was the first thing because when I started reading it, I was like, oh, this is. Off. I mean, this relationship between this brother and sister is peculiar. <laughs> and the mother and the daughter is so, there's just no boundaries between these people. And then I thought in the wrong hands, this could be really exploited, you know? And then in the right hands, it could be beautiful. And I love how it just tread that line mm. through the whole script, that it never felt jokey and it never felt like it was commenting on itself and it never felt like it was taking itself too seriously either or that these characters were taking themselves too seriously I mean they're not at a great she you know Valerie is not at a great point in her life and I liked how rich that was dealt with in such a realistic way where she's a sexual being she's a mom she's a you know the whole, her whole horizon of her life has just sort of fallen and she doesn't know who she is and I felt like it dealt with that in a very very realistic way um, speed, you know? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like the pilot where it's like, I'm out of a marriage, but boom. I mean, sh it seems like she's out there dating again pretty quickly, but when I think when marriages die over a long period of time, that is does feel like the next necessary step is to just yeah. change, you know, the patterns in your brain as quickly as possible. And I like, too, that we didn't see the actual demise of the marriage in the pilot. I like that we were sort of, that all of you are already into your transition, and we sort of fell into that world. We didn't get world. the scene where she walks in on her husband. Right, that's, yeah. if, if that had happened, yeah. it, I, well, I, it wouldn't have, because clearly right. they knew that that's not and it's, right for this. It's one of the reasons why I think, and we've all said it before, but it's the show, and it's what Tommy said, it doesn't pander to, to like, every, you know, like, I hate to say it, but it's not, it's not like, a network television show in that... We know what sort you of, mean. It's sort understand. of... I don't want to say it, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> we understand. It sort yeah. of just assumes that its audience is as smart as the people who made it. Yes. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that is not... Uh, pe people don't appreciate it, I don't, mm -hmm. think, I don't think. Well, and on that note, how has collaborating on the show been different from other projects you've worked on? Obviously, you've, you've all worked in network. You've done... Cable, you've done dramas, you've done comedies. Um, and Lionsgate makes the show and Hulu essentially distributes it, but how is the, the working relationship different with Jason and the execs? And you know, what are the notes like? Are you getting feedback in the same way? Luckily, you know, we just get the joy of acting on it. We don't write it, we don't, you know. And I've been on shows where there's a lot of improv and, and that's sort of called upon. This is not that show. Mm. Where there may be a scene that we, you know, button and we, we, we zhuzh a little bit, it's really only because it happens as a byproduct of really being in the moment and not because we're trying to like, you know, flex our comedy chops in any way. So uh, this has been really interesting because it's been an exercise in completely trusting, oh hi, it's been an exercise in completely trusting um, the, uh, the words that are on the page and their story. I mean, you saw the first two episodes and we read the first episode, we had no idea where it was going. We just had to go on that ride, and where it goes is is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this is like the first act of that of the movie, if you will, um, and where you're just getting to know everybody, and then it like takes a hard turn. But uh, but 
the, the what I know from the writers and what they say and from the studio is it's been just support top down. I mean, even to even have mm -hmm. me and I don't want to speak for you guys, but like to even allow me to play the part is because they trust Jason to do the vision that he has and not to do the vision that the network or the studio has, you know? And, and so it completely, they never would have let me star in their first, you know, scripted originals. No, I don't, I don't honest. think that would have happened. But they, <laughs> Jason said, this is my cast, this is who it has to be. And they said, if you say so, man, mm -hmm. wow. pretty much, yeah. You might say it's a dream scenario. I was just going to say, in terms of the day to day, it's a, it's a, it's a. There's an ease and a calmness to that set, and that uh, you know, that's from us to the crew to the, you know, the directors for hire and and Helen and Xander. Um, and I'll say two things. One of them is that it's it's kind of the three of us in every day, and so it it gets comfortable really quickly, which is nice. It's not. You know, you see a lot of these comedies that are eight, ten people heavy, and we and we have great supporting cast, and Niasha who plays Leon's in a lot of it. But um, just just being there all day, every day, you slip in. Uh, there's um, you kind of get rid of all your ideas, and you're just kind of there and living and talking, um, which is nice and was a first for me to work that consistently over over the course of that many months. And then um, the do you want to say something? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is the first job I've ever worked on, a, a television show that I've ever worked on, where I'm, like, friendly with my bosses. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, you're no. my... No, it's not. Oh, <laughs> is there something you need to tell us? <laughs> the, uh... like really friendly with bosses. <laughs> Wait, how friendly, honey? No, yes. Let's talk about um, it. No, <laughs> but, but I've never had that experience where, where you feel like you can actually have a conversation with them about your character and have, like, an opinion about it. I also think, and this is a small technical thing, but I think the reason the, f the funny stuff, if it works, works in our show is because it, it, ar it arises out of a, a, a real moment. A lot of comedy sets are, that's great, guys, just do it faster. You know, um, I, I think a lot of a lot of half hours built around plate spinning, and you know, um, we were always up against the clock too. Uh, yeah, always up against the clock. We we have a little flex in in with Hulu. And, we're a um, tiny cast too, so we can really you know explore moments and mm -hmm. without being like, okay, now let's bring in seventy, you know, right background. And in the pilot, was there a particular scene you felt was the most difficult for you, or something that? kind of tested you in a way that maybe you didn't anticipate? It's a great question. It's the first time I've gotten naked, so the last... <laughs> the last Not in your show. life, just on uh, camera. No, 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 actually, in my entire life, yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's uh, very I'm a never nude. Guys. He has uh, a... <laughs> jean shorts in the shower. <laughs> he has a tattoo of boxers on his body. What, what, so what, <laughs> what was it like to d disrobe? Um, again, you know, it's, it all comes down to the crew on something like that. Just respectful, quiet, calm, you know, you clear the set and stuff like that. And it's not a big deal. You know, I, uh, you know, uh, other people have it worse in terms of the, the, the nudity. But uh, it's cold on the first time, <laughs> the first day. Quiet, calm. Yeah, I, that prefer, didn't I prefer chaos. When you're naked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How about you ladies? Was there a scene? You have a lot of great scenes together, but also you have great scenes yeah, sort of on your own, think. too. I don't know. I was a, I'm going to not mince words. I was a pig and shit on this pilot shoot. I mean, it wasn't even a pilot shoot. We shot... We knew we were doing this series when we started, so we um, shot the first two sort of block shooting, and I just... Every single day, I just kissed the steering wheel, and I was like, God, I love this, because you get to act, you know? Um, it's sad that that's sort of an anomaly when yeah. you're a working actor. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know there were. M it was it was amazing. I mean, I think later on there was one scene, like probably in three or four, and it came out well. But I remember we both thought we were sucking it really hard. And I remember you guys came into the makeup trailer and were like, "We just we're terrible yeah. actors." <laughs> uh, what was that? But, but I remember that day. It, it's funny how you think you're. It's not working and it's terrible, and you realize we don't know anything at all. It it was fine. And then there's other moments where I was like, "Nailed it!" And then I was just like, "Us." Oh, don't ever cry on camera, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you do it very convincingly, I have to say. And that's she even does. almost as difficult as taking your clothes off, I assume. Um, Come on. <laughs> I'm a never cry. It's <laughs> good. Hey, yo. Um, since obviously this room is inhabited by actors, um, they always want to know if you have advice for them. 
on how to start, how to maintain, how to break through, how to get through difficult times, um, since I'm assuming everyone's had their ups and downs. I'm just assuming that, I don't know, yep, for sure. It's just been all um, how did you get through those moments, and what would your advice be? Uh, um, I don't know if I'm one to speak on this as much as, I mean, just because just I'm I, just I, this I, loser over no, here. No, no, I just, <laughs> ups, downs? What is this down? Go to the two old losers to no. teach you about failure. No, but I, I feel like I haven't been, I have, feel like I haven't been doing it long enough or I haven't like quite popped enough to have that, that sense of like, I don't know. I, <laughs> there have been a couple of jobs that, it's funny because the jobs that I haven't gotten, like the really big letdowns that I haven't um, gotten, it turned out to where, um, I, if I had gotten that job, I wouldn't have been able to do another job that I'm super grateful for, or super grateful to have gotten and been available for. So I feel like it's all, I hate to be one of these like, you know, Hallmark cards, but it's like when one door closes, another one opens. And you don't, I hate, to, I really, <laughs> sorry, ma'am. Um, but it's so true. I, I, auditioned, I auditioned for a play that, um, on Broadway, and I, and I got called back and stuff, and I was really, really stoked about it. And, um, and I didn't get it, and I was devastated. And then I got another job, w I mean, exactly the week that that show would, I mean, the week that it would have been, uh, not premiering, but, but um, doing previews and stuff. So, um, and I was very happy to get the other job. So, you know, it's all perspective and being grateful. I think somewhere along the way, I learned to give myself two weeks to just hate it all, just to just to be pissed, you know. And, and you do that a couple of times, and you know you. And, but the, w coupled with the knowledge, you know you'll come out uh, the other side, you know. Um, and then I I think you know when you're down, you go to work, you know. Um, uh, Michaela and I write, um, and um, I, my first sort of big crash and burn. I wrote a two man show and put it up at the New York Fringe Festival and. You feel so out of control all the time that just sitting down at your computer is something you can, you can do, and that's that sort of helped me um, trudge through those those low moments. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great one. Is that, I mean, even when I left SNL, I it didn't work right away, and I was kind of bummed out and wrote with my my friend. We wrote Benched, which. Um, Ended up going, oh, thank you. Did you guys watch it? Oh, heck. Oh, that's nice. It's gone now. Um, and uh, uh, with Eliza Coop, who will be doing a very large arc on Casual. Oh, wow. Very, very large good. arc. Um, and, uh, but anyway, I, somebody said to me, oh, my gosh, Michaela, if you could just tell your 18-year-old self right now that everything was going to be okay, wouldn't you... And I was like, no, I would not tell my 18-year-old self that everything was going to be okay because I had to hustle. I had to say yes to every single thing. If I, for a second, thought that everything was going to be just fine, I wouldn't have said yes to these really, what seemed like really stupid, crappy, mindless, um, you know, uninspired jobs, right? But I can pinpoint every single thing along the way that, happened because I said yes to that thing that I, you know, probably didn't totally want to do, you know? And then I think later in life you start to go, okay, well, maybe I can, you know, start to use my gut on this and maybe my gut will be wrong and I'll miss it. But, but at the time saying yes to all the, to everything, to every single thing, I can literally pinpoint, oh, well, that's, you know, that job didn't mean anything, it was stupid, but when I was there and I was at Crafty, I met this one person who's now reading scripts or doing this at this other thing now, what I, who would have known that they're, and then when I went into audition, we recognized each other and I stood out in their head and then they said, oh, it was good. You know, I always remember you were funny at the Crafty table, whatever it is, you know, it's like you just never, ever, ever know where that, um, that next little portal is gonna happen and, uh, and that is true, and everything they said. <laughs> <laughs> and on that same note, do you have advice or guidance for getting reps? Because I know that it's probably the biggest impediment. People think, well, I can't get a job if somebody's not helping me. How do I find someone to notice me? You know, how did you guys get your reps, and how do you manage those expectations? Because they do work for you, and I think sometimes they forget that. Mm -hmm. And how do you make sure that they're in, in your business, I guess? 
I mean, I think it goes back to the going to work thing. And I think now more than ever, it goes to, you know, uh, getting out there and creating something, but, you know, put it, put up a show. It's, it's hard, you know, and sometimes, you know, I've put my own dime into it before, um, to, to sort of just get back out there. But the, the, um, you know, getting my first rep and then sort of lily pad jumping along the way, the, those shifts have always happened for me when I've done something new, when I've, when I've, when I've written something or, or said, hey, I'm going to go look under this rock and, and do a, a play for the first time in three years. And then, um, but, um, you know, I think you, uh, 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 thinking outside of the box in terms of, in terms of um, in terms of branding and, and that sort of thing, and and you can get stuff out there. You can get stuff out there in a, in a way that you it was was more difficult. And have you had experiences where you've had to say goodbye to people who just weren't in on brand with you or just didn't get what you were trying to do? Because I know that's hard for a lot of people to say goodbye to managers or agents who've agreed to work with them. Mm -hmm. For me, it's if, if if someone shares my because I I'm I, I'm a huge fan of of uh, of the, the arts and, and theater and film and television. Um, and I, someone has to sort of be like-minded in that fashion, be passionate about it. And those, I mean, I've been with my team now for eight years, but and um, and it's it really comes down to they, you know, they think I do good shit, and they're they're big fans of the whole thing. They wake up wanting to go to the office. The people I've said goodbye to are people that are just kind of phoning Aren't it hungry. in, you know, and are just looking at you know, looking at, at just thinking dollar signs and and aren't really you know, into the, the artistic part of it. I, I, I just changed reps. I mm. change reps the way oh, we talked on the phone about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, she gave me some advice. It was very nice of her. Um, I just change reps because, um, I was getting that, that sense of, this is like a therapy session now. <laughs> I was really feeling like they were, um, I got, I got a sense that, that they, I was being sent a lot of things and they were largely not things that I could have, not offers, just scripts, but largely things that I was like, this is very not at all what I would like to be doing. I thought you knew this. And then this new group that, that I came to, um, where they actually represented filmmakers that I really, really looked up to and loved. And even if they're, I don't know, I just felt like, like we were aligned in that, in that sense creatively and they were like throwing out references to movies they'd seen and I'm like I haven't seen that movie like you're doing your job very very well you're working overtime and that's something to be respected and appreciated I, I think I'd be remiss also not to say don't I spent too much time sort of deferring to them and being afraid of bringing something up because mm. I felt you know I've had agents that I felt lucky to be with and all that stuff uh, it, dispense with all of that you know i think i think people respect a, a point of view and and you know the courage to state it and uh, you know agents come across a lot of crazies that you you've got to you've got to be pretty nuts to turn an you know an agent off so uh, <laughs> don't be afraid to make the phone call and say hey i know this movie's out there and i you know i think i should i think i should read for it and so um you know make make the phone calls or you know i want to i'm i want to start doing comedy so you know do do what you got to do to do that and you got to stay on them a little bit a lot of agents have big lists so um young actors i think spend a lot of time thinking ah, I'm afraid, i don't want to call him you know i just emailed him a couple of days ago well it's don't a big pain in the ass you can are you yeah, i am very oh. very much so <laughs> great i tie it up in a neat little bow and i try to be like like cute about it but i i really you don't need to be cute by the way just be yourself I know, yeah. right? what Jennifer Lawrence said. That's, that's right. That's true. You don't I keep it in to. mind. Um, you but you can't help it. You're a professional cutie pie. It's but do you ever feel that? Do you ever feel like you have to be like, like turn it on? Like, I was just thinking about this the other day. Not anymore. And it's maybe weird and to like bring no, up. No, but that's but a like, good. That's a good thing to. That's a good thing you mentioned that mm -hmm. because I think that that you know not owning yourself in that moment is giving them permission to ignore you. You know, whereas if you just stay. I mean, put it this way. Like, there's. Every single person here is in SAG, right? I'm, yeah. And so you all got into SAG. You all wanted to be actors because there was something in your head that said, I know what I can do specifically. Like, you know specifically that you have this thing. And because you have to sort of throw everything against the wall and see what sticks, you're going to do a broad range of stuff, right? But there is something, I bet if you had to really check in with yourself and go, there is that one thing that I know that I can fucking do. And I can do it probably better than 99% of the people. And it's this one thing. And it may not be leading lady or, you know, um, 
you know, uh, businessman. It may not be those, you know, things that you end up doing or that there's a big calling for and all that. But if you just stay focused on that one thing that you know that you have, you'll fill in those. I mean, be as malleable and wonderful and, you know, and, and um, fluid as you can to do everything else. But, but, but in terms of your finding that agent and who gets you, if you are crystal clear about at least that one thing, I feel like it, if you know where to point the bow of your ship, you're going to find it. And so, you know, I had agents who I just was with them because I needed a logo on my fucking resume. I'm sorry, I'm swearing. I don't mean to. Um, um, but I just needed a logo on the resume to show that somebody chose me, you know. But that didn't mean that they were a good fit. It didn't mean they were a good match. And eventually, you know, like you were saying, you find people that understand where you're pointing your ship. And then you get in line and in tow with it. And then you become a team. And then you're all on the same page. And I remember when I got with my manager, before I got with my manager, I thought, I don't know why anybody ever gets up there, accepts an award and thanks their representation. I don't understand that because I've never had anybody who was like putting themselves out there for me. Then when I was doing what I want to do, I was in the groundlings and I was like writing for myself and I had my voice doing what I think I can do. I'm not like pretty model. I'm not, you know, a number of things. But once I had that one specific little zone and she saw it and she got in line, I'd take a bullet for her now. Like I love her so much and I feel like we have each other's backs in a big way. And I, I think if I had to pass on advice, I mean, that's a long winded answer, I'm sorry, but I just feel like that's the thing is just like stay crystal clear about that one thing that you know that you do. Excellent advice. Um, and now a few questions from the audience. Uh, Robert would like to know, how do you feel new streaming outlets like Hulu are changing the game for writers and actors and the ways in which stories are being told? We've already touched on some of those things, but are there other things as creative people you feel like are being impacted by? One, one thing I love about our show is that you can, uh, you know, uh, please watch it every week, but also when you get to the end of it, it, it plays like a, a five-hour indie movie, you know? So in terms of storytelling, I think all bets are off and and to be a part of that experience. I mean, you know, to take the ride from, to, to play that arc from episode one to episode 10 is so much more rewarding than playing the little, you know, in, in the half hour space than doing that little blip that wraps in on itself every week. And I think more and more streaming outlets are doing, because of binging and all this other stuff, um, doing those more serialized stories, which is, which I find really cool. And also, um, they're attracting great talent because they're willing to let them do their thing they're not you know noting stuff to death and uh um you know there's 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 some risky stuff in xander's voice you know alex really doesn't come out of this snarky shell for a few episodes and and um and and we stuck to that you know and then it makes the when it cracks apart it makes it all that much more rewarding and um you know i i think they know that that's their shot at taking down the networks. Um, I, I don't think they think of taking down the networks in that way. I don't want to speak for them. Take them down! Uh, but it's to change the... A character the... like him would be difficult to sell on. Well, he'd be off story. to the side, like being like, hey, I'm snarky, remember? <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh, he'd be a side character or a best friend, but he wouldn't be the, the lead. Yeah, yeah, because I've played that dude. Yeah, believe, <laughs> believe me, I know, I know that guy. I, I have to agree. It's funny, I did, an, I did a network show and uh, we, it was straight to series, picked up, which was great. And then they just like dumped it all and said, ah, you can binge watch it on uh, NBC.com and iTunes if you want. Um, and I was like, that's weird. This is a network show. I was like, this is so strange. And then on this show, um, I went into it thinking that they would, they would release it all in one you know, block. Um, and then they started releasing it week by week. So they really don't have, I don't think they, they think that we have like this path that we're taking as a streaming service and this is what's done in streaming services when you're you know, releasing a television show. I think they just sort of thought, okay, we have nothing to lose. There are really no rules written for us, so we might as well just experiment. And that's what they did with this show, which is so nice for us because they really, they were so good to us. They were so good to us, we're so lucky. They really let us do a, and Jason has said it this way, um, and I like it. He says it's very delicate. He says it's a very delicate show. It's not, it's not heavy-handed. It's not super comedy, and it's not super drama. It's sort of like its own little thing. And, 
And Hulu was good enough to uh, to be like, all right, good luck. Don't and, and they gave our good, money, you and know. And they gave good notes. Apparently, they, they gave. That's how Hulu notes. taught. Hulu is a computer. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good all luck. All right, guys. <laughs> Don't screw it up. Well, they obviously trusted you, and you guys are great, so don't downplay your own merit. Because and they hired us. Yes, yeah. wisely hired you. And then finally, Scott would like to know, and Scott even highlighted some of these words, so this is how serious he is. Please share a fun or funny experience from set. And also, what do you like to do for fun when you're not working? Scott is looking for fun. Where is Scott? Who is Scott? Scott? Oh, there he is. Scott. Okay. Scott. <laughs> Scott, what do you do for fun? Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's Me too. That's a good answer. Good Just answer. Kidding. <laughs> do you have a particularly... None of us have sons. ...fun story uh, from set or uh, how you kill time maybe between scenes? <laughs> Well, Michaela and I just do bits all day long. Um, so I watch them do bits. It's fun for <laughs> so, me. So Tara has a terrible time <laughs> on set. Um, but Michaela and I have several alter egos, which kind of keeps us on the right wavelength throughout the day. So I, I have an absolute blast coming to work because I think, and I include Tara in this, I think we all are quite delighted with one another. Yeah. And lately, in terms of having fun, we've been, we've been lucky enough to take this show to a lot of places, Toronto and Austin. And so... We've been doing a lot of yeah. whining and dining together, which has been Mostly which has been a blast. Um, we eat occasionally. <laughs> Not whining. Um, well, it helps that you guys all get along, by the way. It's fun. It's it does. Very convenient. Tommy and I have a bit where uh, we pretend to be um, each other's support group about not overeating, <laughs> and uh, it goes a little. You want to give him a little taster? Yeah. What's my name? Who am I? Neil. That's You're Neil. Neil. And uh, the conceit is every single time, this is, I don't know, this is probably stupid, but the conceit every single, it is stupid. I'm going to just. I'm glad. It's dumb. Um, is that uh, we, the conceit is this, that we are each other's support group to make sure we don't go to craft eat because it was bananas, how much food was there, and that we don't eat everything that's on the table. And every single time, <laughs> it always starts with, you know, Neil, where were you? And he has some horrible tragedy that happened that took him away. I'm so sorry. And then I, uh... it ends with me listing the, all the food that, uh, <laughs> that got consumed while Neil was dealing with the trauma. Duck out, <laughs> I had to duck out to call the insurance company. The, ho the house oh burned God, down Neil, last night. Neil, I needed you. I know. I, I would, <laughs> I, uh, under normal circumstances, I never would have left they you. Had make your own Sunday, Neil. <laughs> you did? How, how many did you have? I had, well, I just, I was only, I promised myself I was just going to have just the brownie. Right, but you never have just the brownie. <laughs> this is the ice cream and the, and the banana. <laughs> Neil, I went ahead and I... <laughs> <laughs> it ends like with a we're... grotesque amount of food. This builds throughout the day. And then Tara just and sits there And then I sit in the middle, tweets. directly in the middle. And... She tweets, my, I think OMG. My, I think my brain works just That's slightly at a rated, slower though. pace than theirs. Well, on behalf of all of us, thank you for being here. Thanks so much thank for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. <laughs>